So we insert ourselves in said problem. The problem is this. You have a team of people who you have hired, who are the best qualified people for the job, who when they came in, you were like, oh, the savior. They are here and they're gonna help us so much. I cannot wait until they get started, right? So so they came into your place of business with skills, with talents, with ability. They came into your place of business ready, right? They have the goods. They know what to do. So then if they have the goods and if they know what to do, why in the world do we feel the need to micromanage them? What we don't understand is that many times when we are inserting ourselves prematurely without being asked for help, it causes frustration for that team member. And it is a demotivator for that team member and the entire team. For example, for example, feeling this beat this morning what is going on good people it is your guy philip edge you know exactly what it is the edge energy shot your daily segment of the relatively unknown podcast where we are here literally to unlock your potential daily i am your guy philip edge and each and every day we provide you with practical tips and strategies to help you move from self-doubt to self-assurance to become a better leader and to cre create higher net worth through greater self-worth. Today, my friends, we are literally talking about leadership. Leadership all day long. That, that is what we're talking about. Um, and we're going to jump into a topic called the five common mistakes that leaders make with their teams. Let me say it again. The five common mistakes that leaders make with their teams. Today is going to be a good pod, y'all. I got five things that I'm going to release to you and some solutions and strategies to help leaders if you happen to fall into these categories. Why do I say that? Because we all do. So with that being said, do me a quick favor. Go ahead, share this out on your page, even if you're watching on the replay, because there is somebody right now who might need this information. With that being said, let's get it started, y'all. Regardless of feelings, I'm pursuing greatness, greatness, greatness. My destiny's greatness, greatness, greatness. I'm pursuing greatness, greatness, greatness. My destiny's greatness, greatness, greatness. We ready. We ready. We ready for y'all. Yeah, that, that's how we are feeling this morning. We are so ready for you. Today is a Fuel Tuesday. Fuel Tuesdays here on The Edge. Energy Shot are all about leadership, and we're going to jump in today. But before we jump in, you know we can't do anything without setting the environment. The way we set the environment here is by our daily declaration. Let me give it to you. Our daily declaration is this, and y'all say it with me. Just read it from the screen. When you read it, I promise you, your, your atmosphere is going to shift and change. This is what it says. As a person of limitless potential, I acknowledge that I am created with unique talents and abilities. Y'all got to say that from, from your inner being. I am capable of achieving greatness, and I choose to believe that I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Today, I will seek to find favor with both myself and others, and I will be a shining light for the world to see. Through this declaration, I ignite the spark of potential within me, fuel my growth with positivity and determination, and ignite the fire of success that awaits me. Today, y'all got to say it now, today, I ain't talking about yesterday. Today, I choose to live my life to the fullest and be the best 
version of myself. That, my friends, is our declaration. I say it every single day. If you want this declaration, please feel free. Hit me up in the comments box. Just say declaration. I'll know exactly what that means, and I'll shoot it to your DM. You got to set your day upright. I say it all the time. If you can, if you can just speak right, you can start believing right. And if you start believing right, you'll start seeing right. So look, that is what we got to do. So let, let's talk today. Let's talk today. Today, as, as I shared with you earlier, um, our topic is on leadership, and we are really looking at leaders uh, and the mistakes that leaders make. Today, we're talking about five common mistakes that leaders make with their teams. Um, again, if you know somebody who needs this, please go ahead and share this out with them. But let me jump into it just for you today. The first thing, the first thing. First mistake leaders make is what we call micromanaging. Micromanaging. Maybe some of you have heard of micromanaging. Maybe some of you <laughs> are being micromanaged right now. I, I, I get it. I understand it. See, here's the thing. Leaders, many times, we just want to make sure that things are going in the right direction. We want to make sure that things happen. And sometimes when we look and we don't see things happen, that's when we try to insert ourselves in said problem, right? So we insert ourselves in said problem. The problem is this. You have a team of people who you have hired who are the best qualified people for the job who when they came in, you were like, oh, the savior. They are here and they're going to help us so much. I cannot wait until they get started, right? So so they came into your place of business with skills, with talents, with ability. They came into your place of business ready, right? They have the goods. They know what to do. So then if they have the goods and if they know what to do, why in the world do we feel the need to micromanage them? What we don't understand is that many times when we are inserting ourselves prematurely without being asked for help, it causes frustration for that team member. And it is a demotivator for that team member and the entire team. For example, for example, maybe you give them an assignment, maybe you give them a task and and then you're hovering over their shoulders, seeing if it gets done. Give them the time and the space to get it done. You gave them an assignment, and every five minutes you're checking on their progress to see where they are on that assignment. Give them time. When it gets done, guess what? They'll give it to you. Stop micromanaging. Stop hovering over people who are qualified and know what they need to do. This can make team members feel like they're not trusted. It can feel like they, they're not doing their job appropriately or they can't do their job appropriately. And honestly, don't nobody want to work for somebody who's all up in their business every five seconds when they're just trying to do a job and get it done for you. So the strategy, what's the solution? What should we as leaders do? Here it is. Give your team members the autonomy and the trust to complete their task. Let me say it again. Give them the autonomy and trust them to be able to complete their task. Listen, if they have a problem, if they have an issue, they will come to you as a leader and share with you said problem and said issue. Right. So what do we need to do as leaders? We need to make sure that we set the expectations, make sure those expectations are very clear and then set the deadline. When do you need to have this? So if you set clear expe expectations and if you set a deadline, you can then avoid micromanaging them because you will trust them to get the job done in the appropriate time. This gives that individual the freedom to work in their own way and develop their skills. Remember, they are not you. You did not hire them to be you. You hired them to be them and to bring their skills to the table. So number one is do not micromanage your team. Stop doing that. I hope you're ready for number two. Listen, if this is blessing you, if this is making sense inside the comments box, just give me a thumbs up. Let me know this is making sense to you. I, I just need to know, right? Because this is what we do on Fuel Tuesdays. We give leaders the energy and the information that they need to be successful with themselves and with their team. So here we go. Number two, number two, failing to effectively communicate, failing to effectively communicate. Oh, man. 
a big problem that us leaders have is, see, we have it in our head. We, we see it with our mind, and because we have it in our head and we see it in our mind, we think that everybody else can see it, right? But the problem is this. Everybody can't see it unless you share it and communicate it effectively. So we have to know and understand that, that we as leaders, we are the communication leader also in our teams, right? So we got to make sure that we're sharing with them what's going on. For example, for example, a leader might make a decision without consulting their team, right? So, so I'm the leader. I make the decision. I didn't ask anybody. I just made the decision, you know, because I'm the leader and I can do that. But when I made the decision, I failed to communicate properly what is the decision that I made, what are the outcomes that I'm looking for, and how does that impact each team member, right? So, so now I have this false expectation that they know what to do when honestly they don't because you didn't communicate it to them. You simply have it in your mind, right? And I, and I understand that because you're the visionary leader, right? You have it in your mind. You have it in your head. You have it in your heart, but your team does not. So, so for us, we have to make sure that we are communicating effectively to the people who are on our team so we can all be on the same page. One thing you might want to say after you communicate with them, check this out. Tell me what you heard from what I said, right? Tell me what you heard from what I said. When you just make this simple statement, what you'll find out is if people are truly hearing the thing that they need to hear. So what is your strategy? Your strategy is simple. Communicate frequently with your team members, both formally and informally. Have meetings, formal and informal, right? Have checkpoints, formal and informal, right? When you have team meetings, watch this. Oh, my gosh. Have an agenda, Send that agenda out ahead of time to give people an opportunity to know what you're expecting and what you are looking for from them. If you have a meeting with no agenda, the question that I'm asking you is why even have that meeting, right? If you have a meeting and you're not sending out information to people ahead of time, why are you having that meeting, right? I would just say to you, stop doing that because you are wasting your time and you're wasting the time of the people who are trying to accomplish the things and tasks that you have set out. So have a meeting, communicate formally and informally. When you have meetings, make sure you have an agenda and listen to me, that agenda should change every single week because your priorities do. Let me say it again, that agenda should change every single week because your priorities do. If it's the same stale agenda, guess what? Your people are going to feel that same way. They will feel stale. They will feel like you're not putting forward the energy and the effort to lead the team leader. So we got to make sure that we're communicating. When we do this, it's going to help you build trust, credibility, and you are going to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Can I say that one more time for you? It's going to help you build trust and credibility, and it's going to make sure that everybody is on the same page. If you as a leader do not have trust and credibility, listen, people are going around you to get their answers. Yep, you're the figurehead leader. <laughs> Congratulations. You are the figurehead leader. You're not a real leader in their minds. That's why they are going around you to get the answers that they need. So again, leader, make sure that we are communicating effectively and everybody is on the same page. Mistake number one was micromanaging. We got to stop doing that. Mistake number two was failing to effectively communicate. I hope you all are ready for mistake number three because we only got five of these things, right? We only got five of these things. I hope you're ready for number three. Number three is this. Not providing enough support or guidance. Let me say it again. Not providing enough support or guidance. Your team cannot read your mind. Sorry, they can't. Your team cannot read your mind. Sorry, they cannot. They get frustrated when you expect them to read their mind. So this is a mistake. 
Don't expect them to read your mind just because they've been around you for some years now. Just because they know how you operate does not mean that they read your mind. So understand leaders who fail to provide feedback to their team members are missing a crucial opportunity to help them to grow and develop. Listen, feedback is a gift that we as leaders should be given to those people who we are working with. Right. Let me say it again. Feedback is a gift that we should be giving to the team that we are working with. And in my mind, I will say this. There's really no such thing as positive or negative feedback. It's just feedback. The way that you deliver it can make it seem positive or negative. Right. So if we are delivering the feedback correct, if we're delivering the feedback in the way that we need to, then it should be positive. Because it's a gift. At the end of the day, you should want to see your team win. And if you as a leader don't want to see your team win, that's pretty jacked up because you're setting your team up for failure. So what is the strategy? It's simple. Provide regular feedback to your team members. Both, right, constructive feedback to things that they may not necessarily be doing right but also just regular feedback. When you see them doing anything, let them know. Let them know how they're doing. High five them. Tell them you appreciate and value what they're doing and tell them why. Be specific. Be timely about your feedback because when you do that, it helps your team grow. It helps your team grow. Number one, stop micromanaging that team. Number two, stop failing to effectively communicate with that team. Number three, stop not providing that support or guidance. They're there. They're looking for your guidance and your support. Here is number four, not recognizing or valuing your team's contribution. Oh, wow. This this is a big one, right? This is a big one. Many times we as leaders, we just overlook what our team members are doing every single day. And because they're good at what they do, sometimes we just fail to recognize it. That is one of the worst things that you can do, failing to recognize the contributions that your team members are making to your team. Listen, they want to hear from you. They want to know if they're doing a good job or not. And if you are not giving them that feedback and letting them know that they're doing a good job, it shows that there is a lack of empathy for you, leader, or from you, leader, right? So we got to understand leaders, leaders who can create these empathetic environments, they are doing better. Why? Because if you create a negative environment, it causes your team members to feel undervalued. And listen, if team members feel undervalued, they're going to look for places in which they can find value, right? That may be why people are leaving out of the back door of your organization. Yep, that could be the reason, right? That could be the reason. So, What can we do? How can we do this? Well, let let, let me tell you. We can practice empathy, right? Empathy is a good thing. We do that literally by putting yourself in that team member's shoes, right? Seeing how they feel about things. Listen actively to their concerns and be supportive. And don't tell them things like, well, it's my way or no way. This is my business, so if you don't like it, you just need to go find your own place. Start your own business. That's not helping you nor your cause, and it's not helping your team to be effective in what they do. In fact, if you say things like that, you are going to wind up being the only person working there because nobody wants to work for a leader who thinks that they know it all. Hmm. The reason that you hired people is because that you needed help, not because you knew it all. So make sure that you're showing appreciation for their contributions and providing opportunities for them to learn and grow. All right. So number one. Well, stop micromanaging your team. Number two was making sure that you communicate effectively because when we fail, man, that is a problem. Number three is not providing enough support or guidance to your team. Number four was not recognizing or valuing your team's contributions. And here is the last one for the day. Leaders, if you are not leading by example, that 
is a problem. Let me say it again. If you are not leading by example, leaders, that is a problem. You can't expect people to do stuff that you are not doing or have never done. You can't expect people to follow your lead if you are not leading. You cannot expect to just tell people what to do and not give them a picture, right? At the end of the day, we as leaders, we have to lead by example. We have to be the first partaker. We have to put our foot in the water. We have to put our staff in the water. We have to be and show them that we are part of the team. We're not just barking orders. We're a part of the solution. Just like your team is part of the solution. And when we all work together, the solution can come. But if you're just barking orders from the sideline, listen, I'm telling you right now, you're going to find yourself lonely. You're going to find yourself by yourself. You're going to find yourself with nobody wanting to be around you nor work with you. Yes, it makes a cantankerous work environment, and that's not what you're looking for, leader. All right? So... These are the five common mistakes that leaders make every single day. And we have to make sure that in leadership roles, I don't care what your leadership role is, we avoid them like the plague. Because by avoiding these common mistakes and by implementing just the simple strategies that I shared with you today, you can then build a strong and productive team that achieves great things. The question is, do you want your team to achieve great things? That's the question. Do you want them to achieve great things? Do you want them to achieve greatness? If you do, I'm telling you, avoid these pitfalls. Let me give them to you one more time. Number one, stop micromanaging your people. You got to avoid it. Number two, avoid failing to effectively communicate. You got to avoid that. Number three, not providing enough support or guidance. Man, your team will fall apart. Number four, not recognizing or valuing your team's contributions. If people do something, we got to make sure that we are sharing with them and appreciating what they do. And lastly, we have to make sure that we lead by example. Not leading by example is a disaster waiting to happen, right? At the end of the day, leaders, I just want to see you win. I want to see your team win. That is what it's all about, right? That is what it's all about. It's about being able to see you win and to see your team win. And when we do that, when we can make sure that we're in the trenches with them, we all win. We all win. Let me say it again. We all win. So that's all I got for you today. I told you I try to come on here every single day, right? Every single day we try to come on here Monday through Friday just to give you, you know, information, practical tips, strategies to help you move from self-doubt to self-assurance, help you become a better leader, and help you create a higher net worth through greater self-worth. That's what this is all about. So with that being said, I will see you tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Y'all be easy now. Within me is all that I need with my God by my side. How every time they turn around, I'm still winning, regardless of feelings. I'm pursuing greatness, greatness, greatness. My destiny's greatness, greatness, greatness. I'm pursuing greatness, greatness, greatness. My destiny's greatness, greatness, greatness.